Hi, welcome into my studio. My name is Jason Morgan. I'm an artist and I've got some uh, pan pastels out here, some of the applicators. Lots of people are asking me if they can use normal makeup sponges. I've got a massive array of those as well. Um, some you'll probably be familiar with. Some of these standard small sponges. These more of a um, hairy sponge. I don't know the technical term for any of these. I've got various ones of these small applicators as well. A couple of different shape uh, applicators as well that I built up over time myself. And basically I want to find out and to show you, I know the answer, but to show you for yourself whether or not we should go out and purchase the actual uh, pan pastel applicators that are meant for it, that have been specifically designed to go with the pan pastels to give us the best um, way of applying them in theory and I've got lots of my own uh, sponges my pan pastel soft sponges that's the trade name S-O-F-F-T that I use on my drawings in there so I'm going to try these together so that you haven't got to go out and spend lots of money uh, buying various things that don't work and trying things out. I like to do it myself as part of my job So I take those costs into consideration Okay, so let's start off um, I got pastel matte paper. That's by Clay Fontaine. That's my favorite paper of all times what I use pretty much all the time on my pastel work and I wanted to use that because there's no point doing all these tests on a paper that we don't normally use. So I'm going to zoom in and start applying some pan pastels and let's see how these things work. Okay, so to start off with, I've got a nice vibrant pan there. And I've got, that's the official pan pastel tool. I've already got a bit of the colour on there. And so it comes. Then I've gone out and I purchased some of these which look quite similar they only cost probably um, a pound something like that the mini applicators they cost around about if I talk in dollars because most people are American and watch my videos they're about five dollars I think these would have been around about say two dollars for a pack these are five dollars ish for a pack of uh, twelve also went out and I paid extra for these. So these are makeup sponges again. These were about um, what would work out around about the three, three and a half dollar mark. So they're a bit more expensive for those applicators. I want to see is it worth paying the extra for the, the soft tool, the actual pan pastel tool itself. So I'm just going to pick up some of the pan. I load it, I won't load it too much. There you go. And then I can use a little rub in motion. I'll come down with it. Come down to the top again just to smooth it out that bit more. Now the pastel matte paper obviously is quite grippy. It's got a texture to it. So it's obviously um, holding on to the pastel. If you use a, a paper like Ingress, which is very smooth, it would give a different texture. But I've got to use this type of paper um, for my detailed pastel work. I work very detailed, so I've got to have a paper that's got texture to the surface. Now, this cheap tool, it's really got a different texture. The soft tool has got a very compressed, spongy texture to the top of it. This has got a, a soft, um, a soft sponge. Difficult to tell you how, but it's a, a very completely more of an open sponge texture, and the, you can see the pasta is just falling off of it when I go like that. I load it about the same. You can see that the pasta is just like flicking off of it, so it's not got the control of the uh, soft tool. It's blending down. But the other problem with it, when I feel it, I can feel through there. Uh, if I perhaps if I rip it open, there's kind of a, a hard plastic adhesive inside of it, 
and I can feel the top of this tool as well pushing through the sponge. So I'll grab another one of those so I can actually feel it in the top and that's going to give me a scratchy effect when I do the uh, blends that I do on backgrounds. And I'd use these tools for, say I was doing um, out of focus leaves or little grasses. If you watch my um, wolf demo you'll see I use tools like this to do the out of focus stones and with this one I can feel through it and I can't feel the um, anything in there as such it's very soft and pliable it's obviously something in there a plastic but it hasn't got a sharp edge to it at all so that's those two so let's have a look at this this more expensive one now that's got more of a feel to the uh, to it like the um, pan pastel soft tool it's got a compressed sponge actually in there rather than a soft open sponge just pick some more pastel up. Now what's happened there, it's very different, it, it seems to have deposited it all in the first say quarter and then I've kind of run out of it. So if I go over it again like I did with the pans, smooth it out, it seems to, like I say, it deposits it down in a different way even though it feels very similar to the um to the pan put a bit more on there so a bit different unusual i'd have to use that in a very different way to the um soft tool to the pan pastel tool so they have specifically made this um, for our applications and you can see it is it's very very different different feel to it so it's blended out much better could you get away with using these cheaper tools this one like I say it's got that funny spongy open sponge texture it's very brittle uh, it'd be very easy to break it's going to wear out really quick I wouldn't bother with that at all personally this applicator like I said it probably cost me about three dollars for about say 15 of them or, or so so it's cheap but you know it's more of the it's not on the cheap end of the market for these it's more of the more expensive one of these I suppose you could get away with it but you're gonna have to blend differently it doesn't blend out seems like I say it seems to deposit right at the beginning and then it's more of a uh, hit and miss to it for some reason just the way it's actually holding the pastel and then the pan pastel is giving me more of a um, subtle and long lasting blend as it's allowing the pastel to come off at a um, more even type of speed so as I said these costs are around about the five dollar mark for 12 so I expect that's something around about 40 cents each now you've got to remember that when you're using a rougher surface, a sanded surface, pastel mat is probably, um, it's cl I class it as a sanded surface but it's, I think it's a cork surface on their cork fibres if I'm not mistaken. And whenever you're using a surface like that with a sponge it's obviously going to wear away eventually if you're going to keep rubbing on there. These will wear away, they won't last forever but personally for this applicator I think I would myself be going with these with the actual uh, soft tool the benefits of that blend uh, is worth it for me worth that bit of extra expense so you're not really saving that much by all means go out and try lots more of these makeup ones if you want to spend money just just looking for a cheaper version perhaps you will find one out there I like the actual end of the soft tool with a pointy end on this giving me more um, control over it whereas this rounder version is uh, not, not allowing me to get those finer marks but like I said if you go out there and you try lots of different types of these makeup ones you may find something very similar to the soft tool okay so there's other tools there's other soft tools other applicators and one of my favorites is um, this 
finger shaped one I use it if you look at my videos I'm using this uh, lots and lots and once again it's a very compressed sponge it's not hard but it's not soft either keeps it shaped perfectly well um, the finger shape just seems really natural for laying down colors you can obviously use both ends on there four ends uh, you can use the edge if you want to make some uh, very thin marks as well and then I generally because I use pans a lot to block in a subject I'm using them like this to actually block that subject in and then I put my details on top with pencils now these smaller applicators are obviously much more delicate than these larger sponges and as I said the smaller ones wear out eventually fairly quickly to be honest with you um, these seem to last ages and ages I've been doing pan, pan pastels for probably a year and a half and I've got lots of these sponges that I'm still using if I show you my box you can see that in there they all look pretty dirty all you've got to do to clean them get something like a, a chamois leather microfiber give them a good rub on there they look dirty but when you pick up a color and put them on there it'll come down pretty clean if you want to wash them you can wash them in some soapy water and dry them and they'll come back up looking great so let's compare these because that's another element that people have been uh, looking for to use makeup sponges so you can get this type so that's another compressed sponge it's not as it's uh, more pliable than the uh, pan pastel sponge I'll just give that a go first problem with the, these is that I, I could cut it down I suppose to get this finger type of shape but then as, as you cut them down they start to become a lot more floppy so instead of that what I would do is bend it up to try and get that shape on the edge and this uh you can see it's a lot more tricky I'll try to bend it a bit more could you get away with these once again they seem to deposit a lot and then don't blend out those little dots you can see I don't know if you can see those that's the sponge wearing away on the tip already and coming off okay so that's that one is other type of sponges it's got more of a um, don't know what you'd call it, it feels almost like a, a t-shirt material one of those soft t-shirts so I, at least I can fold this pick up some pasta and that gives me a fairly decent blend or layout there of the pastel is nowhere near as controlled as the soft applicator as you can see nowhere near but it's going to last well I'd say it's going to last a long time looks like it's going to last quite a while I don't know whether it'll last as as long as these these were cheap probably about a dollar or two for uh, five by the look of it but again, I, I don't know, I don't see the benefit really because these cost around about $3 for three, $2.90 I think I've seen them online for three and they're going to last ages. Personally, I just don't see the point. The pans around, you know, are not inexpensive. They last a long, long time. I don't then see the point of buying the lovely pans with vibrant colors in there and then cutting and saving a dollar year and there perhaps on the tools and not being able to apply them properly personally my choice I would just buy these soft tools and uh, like I say these last a lot lot longer now the other tool we've got with the in the soft range are these what they call knives they come in different shapes and sizes so there's a square tipped one, we've got a, an oval tipped one. 
We've got this shape as well. Really easy to apply. We've got the pointy shaped one. And the way you use those, you get packs of these ends and you just pull them on top. So you get a different uh, shape for different ones as a that, uh, flat top. Just push them on top, pull them on. Obviously you can use both sides. Now I use these on my videos a lot as well, especially uh, this shape, because as you can imagine, I can uh, lay down under layers and get it into all the little edges. They will wear away on sanded papers like this. The rougher the paper, the more they're going to wear away, the quicker they're going to wear away. That goes without saying. Now, if I show you these in operation, so you don't want to overload them, but it is very easy then to start applying the uh, colours and it's very controlled and I can put them in all different areas. You see I've just added a bit of yellow there, so I'm just using yellow. I can mix up with the blue, make a green. I can blend all that together very easily with these tools. There's nothing else really out there that I can see that compares with, with these at all to do a comparison. Um, as I said, they will wear away. I'll go through, when I do the underlayer, perhaps I'll go through one or two of these, uh, both sides, when I'm doing the, the blocking in on a fairly large drawing. So you need quite a few of them, but they are really valuable and make it much easier to block in. Now a lot of people complain, yes, that they wear away and they do wear away. That goes without saying. I don't know if, the, if Pan Pastel can actually develop these even further to make them more robust but to still have that blendability. I'm not sure if that's possible. I don't know if they're working on it. Perhaps they are. As I said, these come in different shapes and sizes. Now the sponge on the end so if I take that off, when you buy these, obviously these are going to last forever. Okay, so you'd buy your, your knife tool itself, then the ends to go on there, they're going to be around about, I think it was £2 or $2.80, $2.90, somewhere around that. And that's for 10. So a pack of 40 of these is going to be around about the um, $10 mark. That works out around about, I think it's about 24 cents each. So if I say I'm using two of these when I'm blocking in, perhaps, you know, even if I said I'm using four of them, if I'm doing a really big drawing, because sometimes I like to have one for light colors, one for dark colors, I think that's still a very reasonable price. 40 ends for um, around about the, like say, $9 mark, something like that. I think personally, I think that's reasonable. The only thing that really compares with them size-wise are, are these. And um, they really, when you look at it, they're really nothing like them at all. These got the benefit. So you can hold your hand back if you wanna, when you're doing the underlayers, you don't want to be looking at detail and scratching at little details. You want to be doing larger strokes usually and being uh, more free with your moves. So that's why I like these, um, knife tools from the soft range. Now there are other shapes as well. So we've got the triangles. So if you've got perhaps something where you want a uh, very specific mark in there, we've got those. Um, we've got ones with pointed ends both sides. I use those quite frequently. And there's also lots of these big sponges as well in various shapes. So if you're working larger, or perhaps you're working um, more impressionistically, these are great as well. So lots and lots of different ranges out there. And I think those large sponges, or the, the medium sized ones that I use a lot of, as I said, they are um, around about 
$2.80 for about three of these so and they last a long long time I've, I've yet to weigh one of those out so I hope that's um, cleared things up a little bit perhaps what it's done is is confuse matters a bit more for you but I think if you go and try some of the uh, it's, it's definitely going to be worth you buying some of the soft tools. They usually come, if you buy a pack of uh, pan pastels, you're usually going to get in a set some sort of tools anyway to apply them with. Try them. Try them out. Um, get some of the genuine ones. It's definitely worth buying some of the genuine ones at the start so you yourself can test in the way that you use um, the pastels because we all use them in a slightly different way and perhaps in your makeup stores you may find one of these tools that perhaps will save you a dollar here and there and you want to go that way you can also try these I've tried these out and I've also tried uh, this shape out as well I've not personally had much success with this perhaps they're okay for a very loose background but they always seem to just deposit the pastel in one go and then they've got nothing else hardly on there so you end up with a big splodge like that um, that you've got to try and blend out whereas with the pans the soft tools I can keep going with that and blend out much more smoothly but obviously you need to try this out for yourself I'm just showing you as I see it if I had found an equivalent uh, to pan pastel tools for half the price or whatever I would definitely have showed you but so far I found nothing and I have found nothing that will make me um, spend money on the cheap alternatives that are not going to work so I hope that's give you kind of an idea of what's out there give you an idea of, as well of these soft tools and I'll see you all again real soon if you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is I've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos DVD discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.